This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Teenagers, they're being sent out into the dark, but with an important mission. They're saving lives, and we're talking about search and rescue missions. They are involved in dozens of them throughout the year. In fact, they've just been called out to help find a hunter who's been missing in Tulare County since Sunday. So tonight, we take you inside a unique volunteer rescue team. It's based in our own backyard in Marin County. Kenny Choi got an inside look at the rigorous training that these kids, their students who have schoolwork, they're going through this when they're not in school to help save lives. Most operations don't involve a chopper, yep. but they do require lots of human power and the dedication of volunteers. Jack Sandwich from the Marin County Sheriff's Search and Rescue Unit is training for missions that don't always end well. It is adrenaline and it is tiring and it is exhausting and sometimes you go into a mission knowing all you're able to provide is closure. They climb steep terrain to locate missing hikers and bikers. They're often called in by first responders to help locate people in mental distress who are suicidal. It's never an easy task covering vast amounts of territory with limited resources. We're looking for clues, which can be anything from surveillance videos to footprints to sightings. What would have happened? We were there in 2020 when an elderly couple went missing for a week presumed dead after an easy stroll through the woods in Point Reyes took a wrong turn. This group relentlessly searched for days. We found them and, and clearly saved their lives. The all-volunteer crew undergoes rigorous training throughout the year. It's the only search and rescue team in the country that trains high schoolers to become full-time members. We're looking for the uncommon dedication because if a SAR member doesn't show up, you know, nobody takes her place. The unit is averaging one mission a week, often in other counties throughout the state. Some are body recoveries. Others are searches, like for this woman. She's one of the lucky ones. But we also have very tragic outcomes. We find people that, you know, aren't going to go home. At least we're offering, you know, uh, the beginning of healing and, and uh, maybe the opportunity for closure for people. Um, and, uh, but those can be really difficult. On this night, they're testing a lightweight trail kit that makes the team more mobile when rescuing someone stuck in a ravine. The combination of highly technical training and real life scenarios is giving high school students like Jack's valuable life lessons. It's been incredible. It's made me more calm under pressure, made me more articulate. Seeing them operate with this poise when someone's life is on the line and under these very stressful situations has given me a, a through, through just absorbing it all, I think I've internalized part of that. And so I feel very lucky to be out here. Their work often goes unnoticed, in the dark and in the deep woods. But all those hours of training are saving lives thanks to the men, women, and youth of the Marin County Search and Rescue Unit. Be ready in 30 seconds. You know, they are making a big impact in our communities, but they've also been called to help with a number of search and rescue missions up and down the state. And occasionally, they have to miss school. So how do you become a volunteer? To qualify, you have to be at least 14 years old, pass a fitness test, and commit to serving at least two years. And so many of them want to do this, so thanks to them. California wildfire season has been relatively tame so far. In the North Bay, it's prompting the state to send two firefighting helicopters home until next year. So Cal Fire contracts the two helicopters for the North Bay area, and they each can carry up to 2,800 gallons of water. But they're set to leave for the season because of the quiet summer when it comes to local wildfires. So far this year, together they've been sent to 102 vegetation fires. Between the two aircraft, uh, the exclusive use helicopters that we have in unit, they've uh, responded to 102 wildfires this year. Um, overall, this summer, uh, if you look at just number wise, the number of wildfires that we've had are, are down to our five year um, or even historical averages. Cal Fire says they want residents to know they have the personnel needed to fully serve the community. They say they're currently at peak staffing levels. Reassuring to know, or let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan, who has a closer look at our current fire threat from our state-of-the-art virtual view studio. Hey there. 
Yeah, and this big map that we're standing on now as we present the weather was designed partly with the fire season in mind because we can track all types of weather phenomenon, whether it is the fog that is currently rolling in from the coast and gradually spreading across the bay to eventually pinpointing the source, the location of fires as they develop, tracking the smoke as it produces more of that. Unfortunately, we haven't seen much of that activity so far this year, partly because of the efforts of those fire crews and the data being applied to the fire season, all the additional camera networks but also because the vegetation hasn't been as dry, nearly as dry as it's been in past years. This is a chart that tracks what we call the energy release component. It's basically a fire fuel dryness metric. The blue line is where we have been so far in 2023. Basically, what you need to know is we want the blue line to be as far below the red line, which is the maximum value, as possible. And that really is where we have spent most of 2023, just occasionally approaching during our hottest weather, that red line, which indicates kind of maximum danger when the fire fuels are very dry. The gray line is kind of the average, but we're running even below that. You see the blue line taking a sudden dip towards the end there. That's because of that light shower activity that worked its way through the Bay Area Monday night into early Tuesday morning. Some minimal rainfall amounts, but just a little bit of moisture makes a big difference in terms of the dryness of those fire fuels. Of course, we need additional rain chances over the coming weeks and months to continue to put a lid on the fire threat for this season. And we do have an outside chance of some showers in the seven day forecast. I'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Paul, thank you. Well, President Biden is on his way to Phoenix after he wrapped up his two day trip right here in the Bay Area. Before he left, the president met with his Council of Advisors on Science and Technology in San Francisco. And one big topic on the president's mind, you guessed it, artificial intelligence. I'm going to take executive action, and my administration is going to continue to work with bipartisan legislation so America leads the way toward responsible AI innovation. The president also addressed the looming government shutdown at today's event, and he had this to say. If we have a government shutdown, a lot of vital work in science and health could be impacted, from cancer research to food safety. So the American people need our Republican friends in the House of Representatives to do their job. Fund the government. Well, the clock is ticking. Republicans and Democrats only have three days to come to a deal. You can see the countdown there until the government shutdown. All right, Ann Makovic joining me now with more on how the shutdown could affect all of us right here in the Bay Area. And you saw the time clock. It's ticking. Yeah, it sure is. Basically, most entities that are run by the federal government mm -hmm. are going to shut down everything that's not deemed essential. But even workers who are essential won't be paid until a budget deal is reached. So they get a little testy, yeah. understandably, like air traffic traffic controllers and agents for the TSA. They are considered essential, but since their paychecks would be withheld, a lot of them might just call in sick. That is what we saw last time around. Some airports had a hard time staffing security checkpoints. That was back in late 2018 and early 19 when the government shut down for a record 35 days. National parks, including Yosemite and parts of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area were closed. Muir Woods had limited services and ferries to Alcatraz Island were cut. We are still waiting to hear how San Francisco's Fleet Week could be affected. It's coming up next week already, including the Blue Angels air show that draws crowds from around Northern California. Right now, a spokesperson says they're standing by to take guidance from the Navy on that. But right now, they are still planning as if it is a go. In Fairfield, the entire community surrounding Travis Air Force Base would be affected. 125,000 retired veterans live there who rely on the base to get health care and food at discounted prices. It would be difficult. The way we live today and the rising cost of living, it would be very, very difficult. And, of course, there's the trickle-down effect from retail to restaurants as people have less disposable income and closures cut down on foot traffic. And even the Bay Area's biotechnology industry could take a hit as clinical trials funded by the feds could also be put on hold. So there's all these little uh, things that could be affected in, with varying degrees. Absolutely. Number one, I don't want my air traffic controllers stressed, right. okay, if you're going to go on a flight coming up. And then also when we talk about Fleet Week, we're usually talking about the weather forecast that may stop things. And so you just just don't want a government shutdown to get in the way of that. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of factors that could work against things. That stay tradition. I mean, honestly, it really does not look promising for them to come to a deal in time. They could come up with a stopgap measure. That's the best hope. Let's get it together. All right, Ann, thank you. All right, remember all that trash that was collected recently from the bottom of Lake Tahoe? Look at that. See how some of that garbage got new life today as what? A piece of public art.